Hey, midlifers, welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show. Are you ready to break free from your mundane midlife? Are you feeling trapped in a vicious cycle of rinse and repeat days? No matter if you're experiencing a divorce hangover, job burnout, or you just have the midlife blues, I got you. Hey, I'm Wendy, your hostess of the Midlife Mostest. I too was hit by midlife like a freight train. I too felt stuck in the same dull chapter. I wanted the clarity of how to create a new life beyond divorce and the courage to leave an unfulfilling career. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't worthy and it was just easier to stay in my comfort zone until I found a little secret, the freedom to live my life my way. In this podcast, you will learn how to achieve a vibrant midlife mind and body, how to create solid relationships through love and loss, and how to create an awesome second half of life. Grab your grande latte, pop in your earbuds, and let's get this midlife party started. Welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show, everyone. Today is March 30th, and that means it is almost spring. Woohoo! Although, where I currently live on the island of Madeira, not to brag or anything, but it's always spring here. As a matter of fact, Madeira, Portugal is known as the land of eternal spring. But even here, there is a slight change of seasons and signs of spring with pretty flowers blooming, butterflies flapping their colorful wings, plants sprouting up from the ground, and trees with new leaves. It is so pretty. I've always loved spring. Spring is the sign of something new and fresh, especially when it follows a cold, dark winter like I had back in Chicago. Wah, wah, wah. (laughs) And just like the butterflies, they too were once stuck in their dark, cold cocoons anxiously awaiting to break free and fly. Whether it's the change of seasons or the metamorphosis of butterflies, there is one common thread between them both, and that is transformation. It's about evolving, growing, and progressing in life, as life should and as we should. But isn't it interesting that even as the intelligent human beings that we are on this planet, we forget to bloom, change, and improve our lives? Am I right or am I right? We get so caught up in watching Netflix, hustling at work, and scrolling on social media that we ignore our own progression in life. It's awful. Today, I invite you to improve yourself and your life. I invite you to take a step back, to take a look at your life so you can make changes to take a step forward in your life. On today's show, I'm going to help you spring forward. Get it? Spring forward. (laughs) I'm going to help you spring forward in your life. One of the best ways to make changes in your life is by making changes in your relationships. And one of the best ways to do that is by setting healthy boundaries. Ah, yes, boundaries. It's all the craze these days. (laughs) Wait, what? You don't have boundaries? Like, oh my God, you might want to get some boundaries. Like, totally. (laughs) I don't know why I brought the 1980s Valley Girl out, but it seemed fitting. If you want to be in the popular club, though, you're going to need some boundaries, okay? Seriously, though, not having boundaries can make your life complicated, and I don't want your life to be complicated. I'm pretty sure you don't want your life to be complicated either. I want you to live a simple life so you can have more freedom to live, love, and definitely laugh. I love to laugh. Speaking of simple, I'm going to make this topic of setting boundaries as simple and straightforward as possible by giving you 
four steps. One, two, three, four, so that you can follow them to set boundaries in your life. Before we dive into those steps, let's chat a bit more about why we need boundaries, the different types of boundaries, and what a healthy boundary looks like. Okay, so why do you need boundaries? Well, the most important reason of them all is that boundaries allow you to live your life your way, plain and simple. Boundaries tell the world where you draw the line, where you say yes, and where you say no. Being clear with your boundaries and with others means you are clear with who you are and how you live your life life. People that have solid, healthy boundaries have high self-esteem, greater confidence, less burnout, a greater sense of identity, and less stress. Why? Because they make themselves a priority. Quite simply, they say yes to their well-being and no to the bullshit. All in all, Boundaries empower you to take charge of your life. If you don't have any boundaries at all, well, then you are subject to unhealthy relationships, being stomped on, not fun, taking advantage of, definitely not fun, solving other people's problems, and therefore left feeling angry, sad, resentful, and pissed that you're not living life your way. Ain't nobody got time for that, right? (laughs) No mas, we need boundaries. So what types of boundaries are there? There are five main categories, family, friends, romantic relationships, coworkers, and strangers. I'm not quite sure where the Starbucks barista fits in there, (laughs) but all I know is that if they mess up my grande latte, then they have crossed the line for sure. (laughs) Quite obviously, your boundaries will differ a bit from one category to the other. For example, your boundaries with your spouse will be much different than the cashier at the grocery store. At least I hope they would be. (laughs) Otherwise, you would have quite an awkward relationship with Betty Sue at Whole Foods. Awkward! Anyway, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of setting boundaries. As promised, I'm keeping this simple for you with only four steps and each step starting with a letter D. After you listen to the four steps, I encourage you very strongly to grab a journal, piece of paper, a napkin, whatever, and write about your boundaries. For now, just listen to moi and get ready to change your life by setting boundaries resulting in, get ready for it, higher self-esteem, self-worth, self-acceptance, and a happier healthier you. Sign me up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, get ready. Number one, define. Define your boundaries. When you look at each of those five categories, family, friends, romantic relationships, coworkers, strangers, the baristas at Starbucks, (laughs) what will you not tolerate? Whether it be physical emotional, sexual, spiritual, or financial, what will you not tolerate in those relationships? What behaviors are unacceptable to you? One thing you can do to help you determine the people or situations that make you feel happy and safe is to draw a circle on a piece of paper And inside that circle, write things that make you feel good and secure. For example, hearing, I love you from your partner before you go to sleep at night. Having the time in your day to do yoga in peace and quiet. Hugs from your friends. Making cookies with your kids, etc. Anything and everything that brings you joy 
write that inside the circle. On the outside of the circle, write anything that brings you frustration, angst, sadness, tears, or resentment. For example, your mother telling you what to do with your life. That probably goes on the outside of the circle. (laughs) Your kids not returning your calls. You guys, you better return my call. Your coworkers walking into your office and gossiping about people while you're trying to get your shit done. That goes on the outside of the circle. And anything else that makes your blood boil. There actually might be more things written on the outside of the circle than on the inside of the circle. That is great, actually, because that means you really need to set some new boundaries. It means that you either have no boundaries at all with those relationships, they don't respect your boundaries, and or your boundaries are drawn with a pencil and can be erased at any time. We will chat more about drawing your boundaries with a permanent marker in step four. Once you complete the circle exercise, it would be best to write down in your journal the relationships that need to be strengthened with new boundaries. What new boundary needs to be set in those relationships so you can have more wonderful, peaceful, joyful things squeezed inside that circle. I want your circle to become one gigantic blissful bubble that no one, and I mean no one, can burst. That is the goal. Again, step one is define. Define your boundaries in all your relationships. All right, number two, decide. Decide what happens if someone oversteps your boundaries. It may depend on the boundary, the relationship, and the situation, but decide your plan of action if someone crosses the line. Let it slide the first time. Hmm? Three strikes, you're out. Will you end the relationship if it keeps happening? You have to decide. Here's what I recommend. Make a if this happens, dot, dot, dot list of what will happen the next time your friend talks over you or your boss calls you on vacation or your dad criticizes your parenting skills. If this happens, dot, 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 I will do this. You have to decide, and you usually know what your buttons are, what, who, pushes those buttons, and what really pisses you off when they do this. So you have to decide what you're going to do when they do that. We'll talk more about communicating your boundaries in the next step. Okay, number three, declare. Declare your boundaries and make them known. Just because you set boundaries in your mind and wrote them in your handy-dandy notebook doesn't mean shit. You need to be a big boy or a big girl and use your big words. If the people in your relationships don't know your boundaries, then how would they know if they've overstepped them? Hello? It might seem scary at first, stating your new boundaries. Trust me, I know this, been there, done that, still doing it, especially when it's the people that are closest to you, right? But believe me, you, it is so worth it. Once you make your boundaries known, your life will really change. Not to mention, it will become easier. You won't waste time and energy and all the crap outside of the circle that infuriates you. Did I say that right? Infuriates you. (laughs) There you go. Stating your boundaries really comes down to taking a stand for yourself and voicing your values, needs, and desires. Declaring your boundaries is declaring your love for yourself. Now, it's important to point out that you don't have to yell, scream, or shout your boundaries. It's actually more effective if you state your boundaries clearly and calmly so you can be heard. 
When someone crosses your boundary, take a deep breath, (sighs) gather your thoughts, and express your boundary. For example, if your coworker John likes to make funny comments about you in the meetings that piss you off every single time, simply say, wait, take a deep breath. (sighs) I don't appreciate that, John, and I don't find those comments to be funny. You don't have to freak out, throw your laptop across the room, and leave the meeting. Just state your boundary and move on. If it happens again, then you need to decide how you handle it the second time. Maybe you take John out back. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Definitely don't want to cross my boundaries. <laughs> again, be clear and calm when declaring your boundaries. When people become aware of your boundaries, they will begin to respect them and respect you. Your relationships will become more harmonious and effortless, and that blissful bubble of yours will become fatter and fatter. Oh, yes. All right, number four, dedicate. Dedicate yourself to upholding your boundaries. Dedicate yourself to your happiness. It is imperative to follow through with what you said you will do. Going back to what I said earlier, if you draw your boundaries with a pencil, the people in your life will never take you seriously and always overstep your boundaries. Like this, for example. Oh, Judy always says she doesn't like it when I'm late, but seriously, she never does anything about it. Whatever, Judy. You might as well grab your eraser and start erasing that boundary you created. Instead, draw that boundary with a permanent marker and let it be known that you mean business. Here's Judy after she's written her new boundary with a permanent marker. Lisa, you're fired. (laughs) Well done, Judy. You crossed the line, Lisa. Setting boundaries will take time and people may not like them at first, but if they love you and respect you, they will honor your boundaries and your happiness. Once your boundaries are in place, your life will become so much easier, not to mention all the healthy benefits you'll receive in return from having healthy boundaries. For example, you'll receive healthy relationships, high self-esteem, less drama. Oh my gosh, that's great. Less anger, resentment, frustration, and burnout. You'll have more confidence, more love for yourself, more love for others, more love for life, a happier, more peaceful you, and most importantly, a big, beautiful, blissful bubble overflowing with lots of love and laughter. Yes, I hope I succeeded at not only explaining the boundary process in a simple way for you, but I also hope you're inspired to look at your relationships and set new boundaries. Or maybe throw that damn pencil in the garbage can and rewrite those old boundaries with a Sharpie. Doing the work of setting boundaries will help you grow, evolve, and spring forward into your life. (laughs) A quick review of the four steps to setting healthy boundaries. Number one, define. Define your boundaries for your partner, friends, family, coworkers, strangers. Whether it be physical, emotional, sexual, spiritual, or financial, what will you not tolerate in those relationships? What behaviors are unacceptable to you? Draw your circle and determine what's in and what's out. Number two, define. Decide what happens if someone oversteps your boundaries. It may depend on the boundary, the relationship, and the situation, but decide your plan of action if someone crosses the line. Number three, declare. Declare your boundaries and make them known. Be proactive and voice your values, needs, and desires. Your closest relationship should especially know where you stand. And finally, number four, dedicate. Dedicate yourself to your boundaries. Follow through with what you say. 
no erasing allowed, you guys. Most importantly, be calm, clear, and confident. Hey, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I am truly grateful for you. And if this episode inspired you, please share it with a friend. They probably need to set some boundaries too. (laughs) Share the love. Speaking of sharing the love, I've got more and more love to share with you soon. I'm currently writing my new book on how to redesign your life. I'm creating a midlife meditation series and a brand new online course. Yes, I'm super busy here on the island of Madeira. I will announce all of these exciting things on the Midlife News, so make sure you sign up at, you guessed it, themidlifenews.com. And it's free to sign up, so why not? Um, You'll also receive your free Midlife Makeover Toolkit and a $50 coupon to the Midlife Makeover Method online course. Not a bad deal, you know? Thank you again and get out there with your Sharpies and be bold, be free, be you. Did this podcast inspire you, challenge you, trigger you to make a change or spit out your coffee laughing? Good. Then there are three ways you can thank me. Number one, you can leave a written review of this podcast on Apple iTunes. Number two, you can take a screenshot of the episode and share it on the social media and tag me, Wendy Valentine. Number three, share it with another midlifer that needs a makeover. You know who I'm talking about. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Get out there and be bold, be free, be you.